This video is a continuation in our series on the brain and this video will cover our ventricles and cerebrospinal fluid. Our ventricles are spaces inside our brain that produce and circulate cerebrospinal fluid. So what we're looking at in this picture are actually spaces that are buried inside our cerebral hemispheres our diencephalon and our brainstem. We're going to begin with our lateral ventricles which can be labeled as our first and second ventricles. Our lateral ventricles are going to be these guys here that are crazy shaped. So there is the left lateral ventricle but we have one on each side of our head. So we can kind of see this right ventricle peeking through in the back. So if we look at this anterior view of our brain, we can see our lateral ventricles are on each side. So these are going to be ventricles one and two. These lateral ventricles are connected to the third ventricle via the intraventricular foramen. So those are little ducts right here that connect our lateral ventricle up to our third ventricle. Our third ventricle is going to be housed inside of our diencephalon. So when you look at your diencephalon, there is an indentation there and a space and that space is our third ventricle. So it's going to take up space in the middle of our diencephalon. When we look at our brain from the front, we see our third ventricle here right in the middle because our diencephalon is right smack in the middle of all of our brain matter. Our third ventricle is connected to the fourth ventricle by the aqueduct of the midbrain, which is sometimes called the cerebral aqueduct. So you can use either of those names, but we see the cerebral aqueduct on our anterior view and on our side view here. Our fourth ventricle is going to be kind of squished between the brain stem and the cerebellum. So we can see in our anterior view it's actually quite large but it occupies a skinny space between the brainstem and the cerebellum. The fourth ventricle is connected to the central canal of our spinal cord, which we see there. So those are the locations for all of our ventricles. Now let's talk about cerebrospinal fluid. Cerebrospinal fluid is produced by our choroid plexus, which is a spongy mass of capillaries surrounded by ependymal cells located in each of our ventricles. Our choroid plexi are located in each of our ventricles, on the floor of our lateral ventricles, on the roof of our third and fourth ventricles. So let's go back to our ventricle picture and take a quick look at where our choroid plexi are located. Our choroid plexi are going to be located on the floor of our lateral ventricles, on the roof of our third ventricle, and on the roof of our fourth ventricle. So we see it in all three ventricles. And it's just going to look like this small mass of capillaries because that's all our choroid plexus is. Hopefully you remember our discussion of ependymal cells, which are a type of neuroglia, and we see them here in green 
lining our capillaries. I also want you to notice that our capillaries are completely surrounded by pia mater. On our ependymal cells, we also see microvilli. Those microvilli are great for absorbing wastes and unnecessary solutes. So we're going to be taking material out of our CSF and putting it into our blood. And we're going to be taking good material out of our blood and putting it into our CSF. So it is a two-way street at these capillaries, just like at other capillaries. Our ependymal cells are going to form a blood CSF barrier, which means that our blood is not allowed to come in direct contact with our neural tissue, and our ependymal cells are going to control all of the materials that are allowed into our CSF or leaving our CSF. So our ependymal cells are acting as the gatekeepers between our blood and our CSF. And it is picking and choosing what materials are coming into our CSF and what materials are leaving our CSF. Our ependymal cells have one more job. Some of our ependymal cells have much longer extensions and they're cilia. So when our cilia beat, they move our CSF and this is how our CSF gets circulated around our central nervous system. So now we know how CSF is made, but why do we need CSF? What are the functions of CSF? Our first function is for buoyancy. So our brain neither sinks nor floats. It actually hangs by our arachnoid trabeculae, but our CSF makes that job a little bit easier so that our brain is a little bit lighter inside of our cranium. One major function of our CSF is protection. Our CSF is going to provide cushioning and absorption of forces so that when you get knocked on the head, your brain doesn't go slamming into your skull. It has a nice fluid cushion. Finally, our CSF provides our neural tissue with chemical stability. This is going to remove wastes from our neural tissue and regulate the chemical environment of our neurons so that our neurons can function properly. So here in this picture we see our lateral ventricles our third ventricle, and our fourth ventricle. These are connected. You can't see our interventricular foramina. We can see our cerebral aqueduct, or aqueduct of the midbrain, and we can see our central canal. We can also see our choroid plexus on the floor of our lateral ventricles, roof of our third ventricle, and roof of our fourth ventricle. But what I want to highlight in this picture is the circulation of cer cerebrospinal fluid through our central nervous system. So our CSF is produced in our choroid plexi, and our ependymal cells are going to beat their cilia to move our cerebrospinal fluid from our lateral ventricle into our third ventricle and into our fourth ventricles. Now at our fourth ventricle, we have a median and a lateral aperture, which is a hole that cerebrospinal fluid can move through to get from the inside of our fourth ventricle to the subarachnoid spaces of our brain all the way around 
and of our spinal cord. So our CSF not only circulates within our ventricles and our central canal, but also all the way around the outside of our central nervous system in our subarachnoid spaces. So here we're looking at the same picture, but we are going to pull in one more detail. That detail is going to be the recycling of our cerebrospinal fluid. So here we see our subarachnoid space with our arachnoid trabeculae making these little struts through our subarachnoid space. And then we see this guy. This is called an arachnoid granulation or an arachnoid villus. The plural of that would be arachnoid villi. And in these areas, our CSF is going to leave our subarachnoid space to enter our venous circulation in our sinuses. So we have these arachnoid granulations and arachnoid villi in all of our sinuses and it's allowing us to recycle our CSF into venous circulation. You produce a lot of CSF in one day and you can't hold all of that fluid inside of your cranium. And so that fluid is simply recycled into venous circulation where it can be filtered by our various blood filtering organs, such as our liver, our spleen, and our kidneys. This allows us to find any toxins in our CSF and get rid of them, and it can help mount an immune response if we have any toxins inside of our CSF. If you have any questions regarding ventricles and cerebrospinal fluid, please do not hesitate to contact your instructor.